Once upon a time, nestled in the heart of Australia's outback, was the small aboriginal tribe of the Yirganiji. Their world was forged by dreamtime stories, bound by intricate social systems, and sustained by an intimate understanding of the land. The Yirganiji were known as the guardians of the earth, their lives woven into the fabric of the natural world. They were respected hunters, adept gatherers, and artists who painted the history of their people onto the rugged walls of sacred caves. One day, as the burning sun started its descent into the horizon, the Yirganiji tribe had just returned from their hunt. The scent of roasted emu and smoked baramundi, a result of their day's labor, filled the air. Children laughed and chased each other around the eucalyptus trees, their feet stirring up the red dust which tinted the air in a ghostly hue. The tribe's men shared tales of their exploits, while the women shared stories of their ancestors, weaving wisdom into the fabric of their community. At the center of the tribe were Yaran, a skilled hunter, and Mawu, a revered healer. Their love was like the land, vast, potent, and profound. Their daughter, Jira, an enchanting three-year-old, was a beautiful blend of her parents' spirit. Her eyes held the wisdom of the Mother Earth, and her heart thumped with the courage of the wild outback. As the night descended, the tribe settled into their tents, woven from the sturdy bark of the Melaleuca trees. Jira, lulled by Mawu's soothing lullaby, lay nestled between her parents. As the silence of the night crept in, Yaron looked at his sleeping daughter, promising to protect her till his last breath. In the dead of night, when the moon was at its zenith, a rustling sound echoed through the tents. A shadow moved stealthily, its form small but eerie against the moonlight. A dingo, the wild dog of the outback, known for its cunning and agility, had infiltrated their camp. It approached Yaron's tent, its keen eyes locked onto Jira, an easy prey. Slipping into the tent, the dingo took Jira into its mouth, careful not to wake the sleeping parents, and fled into the night. Yaron, awakened by the disturbance, was alert in an instant. He turned to find his daughter missing, his heart pounded in his chest. Running out of his tent, he caught sight of the dingo escaping into the shadows. Without a second thought, he sprinted after the wild dog, the chilling fear echoing his voice as he shouted, Jira! Hearing her husband's screams, Mawu rushed out of the tent, her heart sinking as she saw Yaron's panicked chase. Falling to her knees, she howled in pain, her wails echoing across the silent plains. My child, my heart! Their cries woke the tribe, who rushed to their side. The elders called upon the ancestral spirits, while the tribe's men joined Yaron in his desperate pursuit. The women tried to comfort Mawu, but no words could soothe a mother's broken heart. Despite their efforts, the dingo eluded Yaron and the men. When they returned, their faces masked with defeat, the tribe plunged into despair. The usually vibrant atmosphere was now stifled with sorrow. Their joy was stolen by the moonlit terror that was the dingo. The loss of Jira left an everlasting scar on the Yurganiji people. The tribe moved to a new location their previous sight tainted with the sorrow of loss. The air once filled with laughter and stories was now heavy with silent prayers for Jira's safe passage to the dream time. Yaron and Mawu were a shadow of their former selves, their spirits broken by the cruel twist of fate. But the terror did not end there. The dingo, or rather, the spirit it was believed to harbor, became a recurring nightmare. Every full moon, a dingo's howl would drift into the camp. Each time it sent shivers down their spine, a chilling reminder of the tragedy. The dingo was no longer seen as just an animal. It was now the embodiment of a nightmarish entity that had robbed them of their joy. In an attempt to protect their children, the Yurganiji people began a tradition. Each night, before the children went to sleep, they would draw symbols of protection, using a blend of ash and ochre around their tents. They believed these symbols kept the dingoes at bay, ensuring their little one's safety. Yaron, seeking vengeance, would hunt every dingo he could find. However, none seemed to be the one that had taken Jira. It was as if that particular dingo had vanished, leaving only its ghostly howl behind. Mawu, on the other hand, turned to the ancestors for solace. She would sing into the night, hoping her voice would reach Jira in the dream time. One day, while Yaron was on a hunt, he found a dingo trapped in a bushfire. Despite his hatred, 
he couldn't leave the creature to such a painful death. He freed the dingo, which instead of running, sat and looked at Yaron with a strange sense of understanding in its eyes. Yaron, looking into those eyes, felt a surge of emotions. He felt anger, sorrow, but most importantly, he felt forgiveness. Yaron returned to the tribe and shared his encounter, and something shifted within the Yurganiji people. They began seeing the dingo not as a symbol of fear, but a reminder of the imperfections of life. They started to accept the dingo's howl, not as a chilling memory, but as an echo of Jira's spirit. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more true scary stories.